I developed a great relationship with Dame, who's my dog, going through his thing right now with this trade situation. Dame okay. was the one that gave me that, uh, put me on the map because his career just took off like that. Like, yeah, bro, quick. I remember, you know, Fast. he made the All-Star team the second year, but he came in, like, doing crazy stuff. But for the city of Portland, they're not used to, I'm not calling Dame flamboyant, but he's a player that, like, Brandon Roy was good. His stardom didn't really surpass the Pacific Northwest area. Yeah. Dame is a, he raps. You know what I mean? He has a explosive game. He's a big basket bucket getter. He's a, he was a clutch guy, like, early on. Mm-hmm. And so there was, like, a lot of appeal to him. Mm-hmm. And then I remember my first, not first big, but the, the, the one significant news break that I got off of Dame. It was his second year in the league. Why the, one, one of the biggest ones, aside from the, me breaking, he requested a trade. Yeah, that shocked everybody. Yeah, yeah that was my boy. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I was like, David, they ain't leaving. That was a big one. But my first big one, his second year, I was able to break. He was the first player ever, and I believe still is the first player ever, to participate. I broke that he was going to do it. He got selected to the All-Star game, so he was going to do that. He, he agreed to do the three-point contest. He agreed to do the dunk contest. He agreed to do the skills challenge and the rookie game. He's the only one to do all five events at All-Star Weekend. He's still the only one. Rookie game, three-point contest, dunk contest, skills challenge, and the All-Star game. Mm-hmm. I broke that. Boom. It was just like, you know what I mean? He's just a polarized. And then, then, then dude, like he ended up a couple few years ago, he rapped, he was um, he rapped the um halftime performance at the All-Star game. Mm-hmm. So he's just a polarizing guy. And so being the being able to cover him is like when he rolls, I rose. Mm-hmm. James Harden trades likely gonna go down the summer. Damon Lillard likely gonna go down the summer. So those are two big things, two big players that are out there that we're trying to get to a resolution. So it's just it's it's chaotic, man. People think that when the NBA season starts, you can start a vacation. Man, please. <laughs> NBA season finishes. Then there, there's these rookie pro days. So you go to some of the rookie pro days, see what you know, see what See how they how they fare. Chicago Combine, Chicago, you go to that. You got the NBA draft, mm-hmm. free agency, summer league. I was at the Sacramento Kings summer league before I got here to Vegas. Mm-hmm. And then typically after summer league, things slow down if there's still not a star out there whose trade hasn't been done, done yet. Yeah, and so I don't, mm-hmm. you know. It's very likely James Harden and Damian Lillard could still be unresolved. That's kind of like the the makeup of what I do now. But during the regular season, I just I'll pitch story ideas, and my editors will be like, "Okay, that's good. All right, go ahead, go out there, go to L.A., go do whatever." Or sometimes it's just good to just meet. You know, hey, I need to go meet with a general manager in New York. I need to go meet with this agent in L.A. Mm-hmm. I need to go meet with this player, such and such. And it might not be for a story at that time, but it may be something that leads to a story or a big scoop yeah, a month, later, on. Be it, later down the road. How do you guys know, like, uh, on draft night, I don't know if y'all, you know, like with draft night, when yeah. you, you guys announce who gets picked before the people actually get selected, how do y'all know? Y'all be, like, seven picks ahead <laughs> before. Yeah. It, it, so it, it, I, it I always wonder. tighten up on it now. It they, like, oh, they don't like that. Yeah. I didn't know they, if that's how they wanted it yeah, to they, be. Or, they tighten up on it. You know, I don't do yeah. it as much as Wolves and Shams. I do it from time to time. Um, what's the best way I can say this? You got kids. <laughs> <laughs> you get, I always wonder. I don't know. I was like, damn, they, I didn't know so and so's getting picked six. Or I was like, they're on the 10th pick. The TV show's yeah. the third. And I'll, I'll be like, yeah, Scoop going to, um, he's going to the Blazers. Yeah. It's yeah, out of the team. Yeah. It's out of the agent. So the teams don't mind either. Depends. It, okay. Oh, it depends on the team. Okay, okay. That's fair. That's like, fair. If, if the team... You don't got to say too no, much. No, I can say no, but if the team has already made their pick. Okay. Because, you know, they have five minutes in the first round. They got, what is it, five minutes on the clock yeah. before the next team yeah. selects? Mm-hmm. Like, so take Victor, Wimbiana, right? Yeah. They 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 submitted their um, pick in in the first 10 seconds. Mm-hmm. But they let the rest of the five minutes go off. So if they already submitted their pick, they cool. They cool, yeah. Yeah, so sure. they don't have no problem. Maybe no problem telling. You know. Oh, they got to submit it and then. Yeah. Oh, okay. It. I never knew it worked like yeah. that. Okay. They got to submit their pick. Okay. I didn't know they submitted and then people. Okay, so that's how y'all probably could get it. 
Possibly. Okay. That, I don't know. I, I ain't that's saying that's so, how that I do it. That has to be so. I, I ain't saying that's, that's how I do it. I'm just saying, like, that's, okay, you know, that makes a lot of sense. They already yeah. submit their, their picks. Yeah. So it's done already. Yeah, yeah. So true. why does it matter if it gets out? Unless they unless they, unless they they really don't want it to um, get out before it's um, officially announced. Okay. But they they already submitted their pick. That's true. That's we, the, the viewer just has to wait for the five minute period to be able with, to, to get the official announcement from um, Adam Silver. Mm. Okay. Sure. All right. That makes that's sense. That's the way it could be. I don't know. That's that's, the way it could be. They got a lot going on. I, I heard some stuff. <laughs> I heard some stuff. That's they got the way a lot. it could be. That's cool though. That's like, cause it's, it's cool how they, they're so ahead. Yeah. Uh, the last thing I ask is like, you know, some advice type of stuff. Um, you know, like people who go undrafted yeah. and they're looking, like I was, I was just telling him earlier, I was like, it's about, the agency you sign with, yeah. uh, who you know, because everyone's good. You think mm-hmm. about it. Um, what would be like advice for people like navigating after college? Because you know, landing the lead is strictly, you know, who you know, your agency, yeah. and performance. So you talk so. about for particularly for an undrafted player who's like, trying to still get trying to still get his thin lead. Yeah. yeah. Well, uh, yeah, agency is important. It is. It, there, there's pros and cons though. So say, say you are you're undrafted, and you're with a big agency. Okay, well, if you're with a big agency, then this is an agent that all 30 teams respect. Yeah. This is an agent that these teams are going to have to do business with or are currently doing business with because this agent has multiple other high-profile clients, right? Yeah. And there's favors exchanged because they want to be in the, the graces, good graces of this, this agent. Mm-hmm. So then that agent can use you or use the undrafted player to say, hey, Take my guy, sign to a three year deal. Oh, they can do that? Man, they, if they, if oh, okay, if they, that's tough. They can say, hey, take my client, give him this, he's solid. Take him, give him a three year deal. Yeah. Because that team might be, that team might say, yeah, we want that star player you got in free agency next year. Yeah. Oh, you want him? I'm just telling, like, I'm just giving you like hypotheticals. Like, oh, you want him? Yeah. Oh, okay. All right. You may consider. But in the meantime, I need you to take the, this kid mm. right now. Mm. And so you got a whole year to, like, talk about that stuff. You know what I mean? So it's like the favors. You know, the, the, those things happen. Mm-hmm. Big agency, you got that type of clout. Now, the, prob- the problem is being in a big agency is that you can get overlooked because that agent might be dealing with a whole bunch of other superstars. They don't have time to invest in you, time to talk with you and all that. So you may feel left out. They feel like you're not getting the help that you need. And so if you go to a small agent, you know, or an agent that just has one or two clients, you're going to get all the uh, time you need with the agent. You know, you're going to be able to talk with him, communicate with him. Like, you're going to know that he's working for you because mm-hmm. he's, he's, not, he's not scattered to a dozen other players. But the problem with that is that that agent that only has you probably doesn't have a lot of relationships with the teams. You know what I mean? It's like, so some, some teams look at a few agents who come and go. There's a lot of agents that come and go. Most agents come and go. So a lot of teams will be like, man, I'm going to deal with you. I'm only dealing with you because of that that one player. Um, but I know that player, when he gets his big deal, is probably going to leave you anyway mm-hmm. and go to a bigger agency. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So I ain't got to treat you with the same respect. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? I ain't got to answer your call when you call. You know what I mean? It's like, there's that, there's that dynamic. But you got to start somewhere at a small agent. So hopefully you can get, you can find a diamond in the rough and then have them blossom. And then the problem is, too, a lot of times when these guys blossom, they'll leave their small agency and go to a big one. Mm-hmm. So hopefully you can blossom them and they stay, and then you can get more because people see what you did with that, with that guy. Mm-hmm. So you got to start somewhere. So there's pros and cons to being with a big agency. Uh, proposal a small, small one. one. Yeah. Okay. That's true. A but stay, but stay the course, bro. Like whoever is your agent, man, you gotta. Your agent works for you. No matter yeah. if he has a hundred clients or he has two. Yeah. Your agent works for you. If your goal, if you got undrafted, your goal is to make it to the league. You gotta force your agent to work. Mm-hmm. You're paying him. Yeah. Him or her. You're paying him or her. So make them work. Make them earn their money. And uh, you know that's it. Don't give up on your dream, though. So thank you. 
I heard that that's, oh. and that's free game for people. I don't think a lot of people talk about that side of stuff. Yeah, they that, just that's, think, that's oh, behind the scenes. Yeah. They, they, it's, it's, and I've seen that firsthand because yeah. I didn't understand it at first until I was like, oh, okay, this is how this works. Yeah. You know, so, that's but behind the scenes. It's like, not all about being just the best. Yeah, for yeah. sure. It's all behind the scenes. Agent is very important in this, in this business, and, and uh, they do a lot behind the scenes. I do this shit for Miss Helen. Miss Helen, the woman who sent me. I hit the club in Miami. Picasso too faded to carry. I took a shot like I'm Barry, and shout out my dog Patty Barry.